So I want to do a quick uh, recap here up front so that if you guys are on this video to learn how to do this yourself, you guys can skip through the first part of the video and get right into the installation. So in the video, I was trying to install this guy without removing the upper motor mount. So you guys want to remove the upper motor mount. It'll make this job so much easier and it's only, you know, 15, 10, 15 minutes to remove that motor mount. It's really simple and easy accessible. So I'll leave a card right here for you guys to click on if you guys want to know how to remove that motor mount and i did a whole separate video a while back on how to do that so i think that's gonna be really helpful if you guys just kind of watch that video maybe even before you watch this video so with that being said let's get started the water pump is leaking and it's coming down on the side of my engine right here and i'm going to show you exactly where it's leaking from and this is pretty common on all vehicles so today we're going to be replacing this OEM FOMO Co part in our Ford uh, Transit Connect. And I wanna show you guys where this is leaking from. Now every water pump I've ever encountered has a what's called like a little weeping hole. And it's right here, that little tiny hole right there. This is where your water pump, when it starts to fail, it has this little weeping hole by design to let you know that your water pump is failing. And this is like a visual indicator that you need to get this looked at and replaced right away. Some vehicles you can see with the naked eye this whipping hole and if it's leaking or not. Oftentimes you don't see this water dropping down on your ground uh, until much later you know where this water pump is failing later on because this will start dripping slowly and as you drive the coolant will actually evaporate from the engine block heat and it'll just burn off. But after a while when you get home or when you go to work or wherever you're gonna see a little puddle like this and that's when you need to start thinking about getting this thing replaced right away. So when you come across this issue, this is when you want to replace your water pump as soon as possible because if you don't, your engine can overheat and then your engine will be cooked. And you have to get a whole new engine or you have to do some major repairs it can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. And most likely it's going to cost you more than the actual value of a vehicle. So this is really important that when you guys see this really low coolant, you see coolant dripping, or your car might be slightly overheating, well, you really gotta address this right away. Now, one thing to note here, uh, replacing a water pump is fairly straightforward. Just know that every water pump is powered by, is generated by your serpentine belt. So it's on one of the pulleys down here. And this particular water pump pulley goes right here. So I'm gonna take off my old one and put it on this guy uh, when I install this thing. So as the engine rotates, this is basically a pump that rotates this fan. And this fan is what circulates the water throughout your engine to keep it cool. And if you lose fluid or if this thing fails completely, well, you're gonna be SOL and you're gonna uh, most likely damage your engine when you can take care of this right away. And, and unfortunately, these water pumps, if you take it to a shop, uh, especially a dealer, they're gonna charge you a lot of money to replace this. If you guys are replacing a water pump, do not, I repeat, do not buy aftermarket. Go with OE. It's gonna be the most reliable, best quality you can get. Now, most people think that, oh, everything on Amazon is fake. No, that is not true. So just make sure when you guys buy OV parts, whether it is AC Delco, a Mercedes, or Audi, a BMW, or Ford, it has their logo stamped on the actual part itself. So most OE parts have their stamp, like an Audi symbol, a Volkswagen symbol, or Ford symbols right here, FOMO Co, Ford Motor Company, okay? So that's how you can tell if these parts are fake or not. Uh, most oftentimes you see a lot, there are a lot of fakes on Amazon, there's no doubt about it. So just check the steel stamping, it has the logo of your vehicle. Okay, so I want to show you guys how to replace this uh, without move, removing too many things. Now the water pump on this guy is way down there. Let me see if I can zoom it in for you all. Okay, it's right there with those three bolts. So we got to take the serpentine belt off and then plus we have all these things um, basically in our way, you know, like the coolant reservoir here. We'll just kind of move this out of the way because the hose comes right here. And I want to, um, oh yeah, and also the, your motor mount right there is sort of in the way. And they do recommend removing that as well to make it easier. We may do that, 
but I'm going to see if I, if I can take off the water pump without removing that motor mount. So it should be fairly um, easy. So let's get started on that. One of the things I'm going to do to make this job a little easier is, and for the camera as well, I'm going to move this radiator fill filler uh, reservoir out of the way like this. Okay, so you can see that this motor mount right here, it is kind of in the way of this pulley, the, the water pump pulley right here. So, but I think it's going to be okay. But if we need to, we'll take this out because to take this out, it might take another 15-20 minutes, but it's not a big, you know, big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these three bolts on, on this pulley here that's bolted to the water pump. And that pulley down there is basically this guy right here is mounted right here, the three bolts. So if you do it now, uh, before you take the belt off, it's going to be so much easier. And so this job is going to you know, require a little bit of patience. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, so then once you've broken the three bolts on that pulley, you can go in and uh, disconnect the, the belt. There we go. Let's just go the wrong way. And then remove the belt from the pulley tensioner. Okay. Then the belt comes right off. Now there are three bolts, one, two, and three, that's on the water pump that's uh, screwed into the engine block. So we're gonna get those three off right now. Whoops. Okay, well that's no good. All right, so um, I bottomed out this ratchet against this engine, this engine mount. So now I gotta switch to a shorter setup. All right, well that was a failure. I'm bleeding. So maybe taking that motor mount would have helped. Okay, I think she's ready to come out. So I had to take a screwdriver and uh, put in a little crack and then just give a little twist, you know, throughout the water pump. And then she's about to come out here. So make sure you guys have a big container to put underneath the engine to catch all the coolant. So let me get this thing lined up. Okay. All right, here we go. And hopefully this will come right out. Out of the top. Whoa. There she comes. Okay. So, um, I caught most of it, so that's good. Alright, so let's see if we can slide this guy out um, from the top. It's a pretty tight fit. All right, guys, so um, just a few minutes later, I end up just taking the motor mount off. Now, if you guys want to see me how I do this uh, motor mount, I'll put a link down below. You guys can go watch that video uh, after this or another video, because I already did a whole video on how to replace this motor mount. Okay, so, so, so basically um, you got to use a jack and a piece of lumber underneath your engine to raise the engine up so you can get the motor mount off. But then you have to uh, drop the engine a little bit with a jack so you can get this thing out. So there it is. This was not the job I was expecting. I was expecting this to be a little bit easier. Um, but if I would have taken the motor mount out earlier, this would have been way easier. Okay, so there she is. 
So as I was saying before, uh, these water pumps fail. They all fail. There's a seal inside this motor here, and that seal is, you know, is what's causing the slow leak. And that's where the water comes out of this little weeping hole right here on this old pump. So yeah, it's just a thing that you got to do. It's not a big deal. It shouldn't free this, this freely. There's generally some resistance as I showed you guys earlier. So just want to share that with you guys uh, before I toss this. So this van has 275 or 76,000 miles on this thing. So this is, um, I believe the original OE water pump. And this is why you don't want to use any aftermarket. Just spend a little extra money. And um, like I said, this thing I paid, you know, 42 bucks on, on, uh, on Amazon for the OE water pump. You don't want to take a chance on something cheaper. You don't want to do this job multiple times. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so we're ready to put this thing back together. Um, first thing you want to do is take some of this um, new coolant and then put it on this O-ring. This is going to help this uh, water pump slide into its slot a little easier. Then you want to get the correct orientation. Okay, so now it's in, there, in the right orientation. You're going to just push it in with both hands. And before you start screwing things down, you want to go down underneath the car, make sure the, the water pump and the engine uh, surface is mated correctly. There's no gaps. Okay, so the torque spec on the water pump itself is uh, 10 Newton meters. So that's like seven foot pounds, which is not very much. Okay. Okay. And the bottom one. So now the pulley torque spec on these is uh, 20 newton meter. So again, not very much. So I'm going to raise the engine up just a little bit here. So if you guys don't have a torque wrench, uh, I think that's okay. Just, just make it snug but not over tighten and most importantly you want to make sure that all three bolts are equally equally tight all right so just a quick update um i actually end up removing so i put the this motor mount back on but I left this bolt off so that I can get my torque wrench in there on that water pump pulley. So before you couldn't do that because that bolt was in the way. So by leaving a bolt out, super easy access. You can torque it down to your 20 newton meter. So, okay, so I've got everything back together. The belt's on, everything's torqued down. And now all we gotta do is add um, some fluid in the reservoir. Now, this isn't like your normal, um, radiator where you gotta burp it if you will this is much easier this thing has a pressure cap so this will basically burp itself okay so we're going to fill that up to the fill line and we're going to start the engine uh, we're going to let it run and we're gonna let it run and uh, help burp this thing a little, a little faster. So we're gonna do that by getting the engine up to running temperature. So before you do that, you wanna make sure you got all your rags and tools out of the engine bay. 